Okay, I always tell my students that order of operations will either guide them through the rest of their mathematical lives or haunt them the rest of their mathematical lives. And then I ask which would they prefer. And everybody usually answers guide. Alright, let's talk about it. Who has ever heard the acronym or seen the acronym? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Some people just say PEMDAS or PEMDAS. I frankly don't remember either of those when I was learning this for the first time, but in some of my books as, as a teacher, uh, I, I had seen the, the acronym, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, as a way to help you remember what's going on. The P stands for parentheses, okay? We're going to see sometimes we have square brackets as opposed to parentheses. Sometimes you even see these little curly Q braces. Those are grouping symbols. Even a fraction bar is kind of like a grouping symbol. Okay, so P is kind of generic for that. Excuse, that's exponents. My dear, multiply and divide. Okay, but a big caveat here. Same level of priority. Okay, meaning multiply and divide go together. So if I happen to hit a division before I hit a multiplication, I'm going to do that division first because they're the same level of priority. Okay, I don't go through and do all the multiplications and then go back and do the divisions. I don't do that. I do them together as they occur from left to right. Same thing with add and subtract. Okay? Same level of priority. Okay? If I hit a subtraction first, I'm going to subtract first. If I hit an addition first, I'm going to add first. Okay? So we're going to work through problems following these orders. Okay? Following this, this, this guy. Uh, let's look at this example. If we have 18 plus 2 times 3 minus 10. Okay? Well, I don't have any parentheses. I don't have any exponents. I've got a multiplication and an addition and a subtraction. So I need to do that multiplication first. So I leave the 18 and the plus alone. I do 2 times 3 is 6. And then I do the minus 10. Okay, 18 plus 6 is going to give me 24 minus 10, 14. Okay, really, really, really basic calculators will not get this correct. Okay, I call them Mickey Mouse calculators. I keep one for that purpose. If I try to do this, 18 plus 2 times, see it gave me a 20 right there, that's wrong, times 3 minus 10, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all wrong. It gave me a 50. Mickey Mouse calculators do one thing at a time. They do what you told them to do. I said take 18 plus 2 and it gave me 20. And then it took 20 times 3 is 60. And it took 60 minus 10 and gave me 50. It doesn't understand the order. Okay, Your scientific calculators and your, your more advanced calculators do understand the order. But I want to make sure we understand by hand as well. Okay, but Mickey Mouse has failed me again. Alright, let's do a more complicated one. Let's do 6 squared minus 24 divided by 2 squared times 3 minus 1. Okay? I do not have parentheses, but I have exponents. So let me go through and tackle the exponents first. 6 squared is 36. Minus 24 divided by 2 squared is 4 times 3 minus 1. Okay, I tackle the exponents. Now I need to multiply and divide. As it occurs from left to right, you see I hit a division first. Okay, so let's be careful now. I'm going to bring down that subtraction sign. Okay, right? I brought it down. So now that's good old positive 24 divided by good old positive 4, which is good old positive 6. Okay? Don't make the mistake of bringing the negative down and then still treating that as though it's a negative 24 divided by 4 because then you'll give yourself a negative 6 and you'll have a minus negative down here, which is a plus positive, and that's not what we got. That's a negative. 
It's a minus, okay? So if I bring it down, then it's going up here. Now it's positive divided by positive. Still gives me positive. This is what I brought down. All right. Again, I'm just going to do one little thing at a time here. So the division's now done. Now let's multiply 36. Again, I'm going to bring that minus down. So it's 6 times 3 is 18. Minus 1. 36 minus 18 is 18. Minus 1 gives me 17. Okay, so we just work our way through. Nice sequence of operations. Just work our way through. Okay, let's do this one. 2 times 5, and then all of that squared. Let's compare that to this one. 2 times 5 squared. Okay, similar looking, but one's got that parentheses and one doesn't. All right, please excuse. Inside parentheses first. So I've got 2 times 5 is 10 in that parentheses squared. 10 squared is 100. Here I don't have parentheses, so I move right on to the exponent process. 5 squared is 25, 2 times 25, 50. Okay, so you see I get quite a different answer depending on that parentheses or not that not having that parentheses. So it's very important that we get it right. Okay? Okay, as much as I would love to do the next example in my book, and I really love whipping this one out in class, I'll just show you for your own amusement. I love whipping this one out in class. Look at this one. Right here. All those fractions. But, in the interest of our time, uh, I don't think you're going to have something like that to do on your exam. But uh, you can imagine the fun I have with that creature in my algebra class. Alright, let's look at another one here. Two, now I'm going to bust out the square brackets here. Okay, and the only difference in this context between a parenthesis and a square bracket, there is no difference. Uh, I'm just changing symbols so we don't get confused by having a pair of inner parentheses and then a pair of outer parentheses. And we probably wouldn't get confused with that anyway, but most textbooks will switch symbols just for that reason. There is a, a context where a parenthesis and a square bracket do have different meanings, but, but not here. Okay, so here we just have an inner parentheses and an outer bracket. And when we have this situation, we start at the inner parentheses and we work our way out. And within this inner parentheses, I could have all kinds of order of operation stuff in that parentheses. So I'll tackle all of that stuff in the parentheses before I expand out. Okay, in this case, we have one thing to do only in the parentheses, and that's 4 minus 7. So I'm going to tackle that. But we could have had all kinds of stuff to do. Our own little world of order of operations could have been right inside here. We would have to do all that first. Okay? All right. So I've done that. So now, again, outer bracket. I could have a whole world of order of operations within this outer bracket. And I want to tackle that before I move outside the bracket. Well, what do I have in here? I have this is a multiplication, right? It's not a subtraction. It's not 5 minus 3. It's 5 times negative 3. So a multiplication. And in addition, I'm going to do the multiplication first. 5 times negative 3 gives me negative 15. Okay. Negative 15 plus 9 gives me a negative 6. And 2 times negative 6 gives me a negative 12. Okay. We just work our way down. Just like that. All right, let's sneak another one over here where we have some room. How about this one? 18 divided by 6 plus 4, open a square bracket. 5 plus 2, open a parentheses. 8 minus 10, close parentheses, cube parentheses, close the square bracket. Okay? Start at the inner parentheses and work our way out. So I'm going to leave all this stuff alone. Eight minus ten gives me a negative two. Okay, and I'm going to cube that negative two as my next step. So now the inner parentheses are done, but I'm going to cube that inner parentheses and then work work my way out and do the bracket. When you really get the hang of it, sometimes you'll see we can do more than just the exact proper order. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But right now, let's, let's keep trucking here. So, negative 2 in parentheses cubed is negative 8. Okay. 
Still working on that bracket. Now, what's inside the bracket? An addition problem and a multiplication problem. So that multiplication must be done first. So 5 plus 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. So now I'm going to add 5 plus negative 16. Gives me a negative 11. Okay? So the bracket's finally tackled. So what's left? A division, an addition, and a multiplication. Okay, so I'm going to tackle that division first. Now, you may have asked the question, 18 divided by 6 is 3. You notice every one of these steps, I carry the 18 divided by 6 down. Couldn't I have written a 3? Couldn't I have put a 3 here, 3 here, 3 here, and just left that 3 instead of waiting so long to do the 18 divided by 6? Couldn't I have done that? And the answer is yes. And the reason why it wouldn't have been a problem is because that 18 divided by 6 is its own little isolated problem over here, protected by this addition sign right there. Because the last thing I'm going to do is add and subtract. So if I have an addition sign here, this is never going to be touched until the very end when I finally try to add these two things together. Okay, so yes, when you really get the hang of it, I can, you know, I don't want to use the word violate, but I can do more than one thing at a time within this order of operations because I know certain things are protected and it won't be a problem. Okay, but wait until you get, get enough, uh, you know, experience to feel comfortable doing that. But okay, but yes, we could have called that a three right away and been safe the whole time only because that plus sign protects it because I'm still not going to add it to the four because I have to multiply over here next and get a negative 44. So now the very, very, very last thing I'm going to do on this whole problem is mess with whatever was over here and add it to whatever is now over there to give me a negative 41. Okay? All right, order of operations. Let's do one more, right? Let's do a big messy fraction one. Oh, yeah. Not like that fraction one that I skipped. That, that's the true messy fraction. This is an easy fraction one. This is a big old fraction one. Meaning I have a bunch of stuff on the top and a big fraction bar and a bunch of stuff on the bottom. We're going to treat these like separate little problems. I'm going to do order of operations on the top. I'm going to do order of operations on the bottom. And at the end of the problem, I'll worry about the fact that it's a fraction, and I'll divide it, or I'll reduce it, or I'll do whatever I have to do. Up top, we have a parentheses. Let's tackle 3 minus 12 gives me a negative 9. Okay, and again, if you're asking yourself, can I just call it a 24 right now? Yeah, you can because it's protected by that plus sign, but I won't. But yeah, you can. Uh, 2 to the 4th power, what's that? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? So 16 plus 1. All right, back up to my numerator. Multiply, add, multiply, so I can go through and multiply. If, you, if you're really uncomfortable, just do one multiplication at a time. But we could have knocked them both out, right? Downstairs, the only thing left to do is add them together. So now I'll do the other multiplication up here. Okay, so now all I have up top is an addition. So negative 18 plus 24 will give me a 6 over 17. And now I'll deal with the fraction. And in this case, it's already reduced. I don't really have to do anything. Okay, but there we go. Done. Okay. So we're going to use this order of operations for everything, but, but the first thing we're going to use it for is something called evaluating an expression. Expressions are just a bunch of terms added together, a bunch of things added together, right? We, we talked about those a little bit before. But what if I had this? Negative x squared minus 7x. Okay, I got some negatives, I got some exponents, I got all kinds of good things in there. Well, if I just asked you to simplify that, you would hopefully tell me I can't simplify because they're not like terms. I can't combine them. Okay, but if I tell you what x is. x is negative 2. Now you can do what's called evaluate. You can put the negative 2 in there wherever you see an x and you can boil this down to a value. Now this is a pretty complicated one with all these negatives. Let's be careful. That negative comes down. x 
is negative 2, and I'm going to square it. So I must open a parenthesis here, put my negative 2 in there, and then square it. I had to put in my own parentheses. There weren't parentheses there because this was just some magical letter X that was being squared. But magical letter X is a negative number, so that negative number must be squared. Okay. Minus 7 times that magical number, which is negative 2. So there's my problem. Okay, I've got negative out front, negative 2 in parentheses squared, minus 7 times negative 2. Order of operations. There's nothing to do in the parentheses. Let's move on to exponents. That negative out front stays put. Negative 2 in parentheses squared becomes positive 4. That minus is coming down. That's subtraction. So now that's 7 times negative 2, negative 14. Okay? Minus negative is our best friend. It's plus positive. Negative 14, uh, excuse me, negative 4 plus 14 becomes a positive 10. Okay? Let's do a similar one. Let's do negative x squared minus 4x. And let's say x is negative 5 this time. Negative sitting there, minding his own business. Negative 5 in parentheses squared minus 4 times negative 5. I substitute in the number for the letter. Okay? That negative stays put. Negative 5 in parentheses squared becomes positive 25. Bring down that subtraction. So now that's positive 4 times negative 5. That's negative 20. Minus negative. It's plus positive, our best friend. And that becomes a negative 5. Okay? Alright. The last thing we can do with this is maybe we're not going to be given what x is to evaluate, but maybe we still want to simplify a, 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 an expression that has some algebra in there. Okay, for example, 18x squared plus 4 minus square bracket 6 parentheses x squared minus 2 close parentheses plus 5. Okay. We can't boil this down to a number unless somebody tells us what x is, but we can clean it up and simplify it. So let's do that. Let's look. Well, inside my inner parentheses, I can't combine the x squared and the 2 because they're not like terms, and nobody told me what x squared is. So I'm going to move beyond that and distribute my 6 across. 18x squared plus 4 I leave alone. The minus sign I leave alone. Let's open this bracket up. And I'm going to distribute my 6 across. I'll get a 6x squared minus 12. And then I had a plus 5. Okay? Inside that bracket I can still do something. So let me do it. Leave everything else alone. What can I do in the bracket? I can put this negative 12 and this positive 5 together. So it'll be a 6x squared minus 7. Okay, now I got a subtraction sign or a minus sign in front of a parenthesis, or in this case a bracket. It's like distributing a negative one across, right? We talked about that in another video. So that becomes negative 6x squared, and that becomes positive 7. Okay, and finally I can combine my like terms here. I've got an 18x squared and a minus 6x squared, so that's going to be a 12x squared. And I've got a positive 4 and a positive 7 that I'm going to put together. So plus 11. Okay. All right. Sweet. We're going to do some more evaluating expressions here in the next video. I kind of dove into some, some big ones there. Um, so we'll, if, if that bothered you at all, what I did there, and, and not this one, but the last couple of examples, uh, we're going to do more kind of more basic evaluating expressions here in the next uh in the next section, okay? So uh, stay tuned for that.